Good morning. I want to welcome everybody here to church. There are people out there that want to be at their church but aren't. So I thank everybody for being here. Lord, I ask our Heavenly Father, our leader, our Savior, to come and join us this morning. Reach out and touch everyone here so that they know your presence. Lord, I ask you to bless Kevin as he goes on with his service today. And bless our praise team and our choir for the songs that they sing. And Lord, I ask you to do all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Got some announcements for this morning, too. Uh, let's see. I've got to flip it upside down. No, I don't. I need a new one. How about that? Well, I'm going to cheat here and say Susie has an announcement she needs to make, and hopefully she'll bring me up the bulletin so I can say the rest of them. Good morning. As you know, we're trying to put together a new pictorial for the church. Well, thank you. <laughs> I have several pictures, but I'm missing several people. If you did not have your picture taken, and you can get up with me, I'll take a picture off the cuff. I've done a couple this morning. Um, if that doesn't make you happy and you want to send me a selfie, you may do that and send it to suzykling at yahoo.com, and I can still use it. But as soon as possible would be really nice. <laughs> Thank you. And that little pictorial, I'm going I'm to call it a yearbook, help me learn everybody's names. So I do encourage you to do that because we have many new people coming in. All right, upcoming events, Thursday night, Thanksgiving dinner. All right, nope. Thursday noon, excuse me. Thursday noon, all right. All right, Thursday at noon. And what's that? Th Thursday at noon, be here, be square. From what, I, from what I understand, WKRP is not dropping any turkeys on us. Um, the, then de December 3rd, we've got the Decorating the Church for Christmas celebration, 10 a.m. I'd encourage everybody to come out and do that. I kind of miss decorating things for Christmas when I was a kid. On December 7th, we have a concert, uh, a community gospel choir concert at First Baptist Church. On December 18th, we have a Christmas cantata with our choir here at the church. Christmas Eve, we have uh, at 6 p.m. a Christmas Eve service. Of course, that is December 24th. And Christmas morning, we have a Christmas morning breakfast right here at the Fellowship Hall. And I am certainly looking forward to that. We have mission trips coming up in 2023. Uh, they're working on a Costa Rica trip, which will be announced. Uh, Vermont, I guess they've rescue or they're scheduling it for J July 28th through August 2nd. Life groups meet every week and at various locations. Quite frankly, I can't quite remember what I, th I think my life group does meet tomorrow night here at the church. So I hope you'll be here, and I hope everybody else has the opportunity to meet with their church life group as well. So I'd like to. Thank you for coming. If you're a visitor, please pull out the visitor sheet in front of you and turn it in. And I hope we have a blessed morning. All right, if everybody will stand, please, so we can center our hearts and our minds on the reason we're here today for worship. I just want us to take a few minutes before the song starts. And if you want to, you can close your eyes if it helps you focus. But I just want us to think about the goodness of God to us. Think about all the prayers that he's answered. The sicknesses that he has healed. The trouble that he's gotten us out of. The family member that he helped the moment he showed up when you were expecting him or maybe when you least expected him. 
So as we sing this song, that's what we want to focus on. This is Thanksgiving week, but as believers, we should be thankful always for what he's done for us. But let's focus our hearts this morning on his goodness.
time. If you're a kid in the house from age 2 to 102, if you would come forward here, well, we would love to have you. So any kid, all kids, this is your time, your time that we'd love to share uh, something from God's Word, especially made for you, custom made for you. So come on down. Hey, guys, look at all these kids coming down. All right. Hey there. Lots of kids. <laughs> all right, happy. Hey, good looking. That's right, Eddie. It's a good looking group here. You want to hold my candy basket for me? All right. So, <laughs> should I share or not? I don't know. You got a lot last week, though, didn't you? <laughs> That's awesome. You know, God tells us that if we uh, go after him, he promises us to reward us. It says in his word that uh, if we diligently seek him, he'll reward us, okay? So anyway, today I'm excited about sharing with you about the joy of thanksgiving. But I want to go beyond that um, to understand that God not only wants us to have um, a heart of thanks, but he wants us to, to grow in that. So this year we want thanksgiving to go to thanks living. So we don't have to wait for thanksgiving. Um, what are some things that we can be thankful for today? Anybody? Let me get this mic out here real quick. What are some things that you're thankful for, be thinking of? Um, anybody here want to share? You got one? Okay, go ahead. My grandma being alive and my great-grandma being 92 and still alive, perfectly fine. Very nice. Very nice. I'm thankful for God because he protects us all. Very good. That is awesome, Mesa. I'm thankful for our families. Wow, that's awesome. Thankful for my mom. For your mom. Very good. Listen, that's so awesome. You know how natural it was for these kids to give thanks to God? You know, I probably didn't have to tell them to. They just want to. Anybody else, something you want to thank God for today? Anybody? Anybody want to share something? Anybody? Well, there are lots of things to be thankful for. How about for the, the Thanksgiving that's coming up? What do you like about Thanksgiving? Anybody want to share what they like about Thanksgiving? What do you like? Your family gets to gather up together. Okay, very good. Your family gets together. That's our highlight, too. We love that, too. We have our family coming in uh, this week, and so we're excited about that. To eat turkey. I was finally hoping somebody would say that. To eat turkey. That, that's, that's my favorite part. It's not the family. It's turkey. Get rid of the family, man. Just give me some turkey. No. <laughs> There's a lot of turkeys that show up, but no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The food. The food, very good. About families. About families, very good. Sweet, all right. Anybody else? All right. Well, listen here. Um, there is a verse um, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 that says, In everything give thanks. So how often should we give thanks according to that verse? In everything. Do you think we should be able to thank God even when things are hard or tough? Why should we thank God when things get hard? I mean, if God's going to allow that, that, that would make him not good, right? God's not good if he allows that, right or wrong? Tell me. Yes. Wrong. That's right. God's always good. The Bible tells us it's just that we live in a very broken world, a very evil world, where people uh, sometimes do hurtful things to each other. And, and so, but the Bible tells us that we can still give thanks. If we can give God thanks for anything, the number one reason that I am thankful is that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Because what that means is we can have forgiveness of all our sins. We can know 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt that we can be forgiven and go to heaven. We have to be forgiven to go to heaven. If we're not forgiven, then we can't go to heaven. Easy math, right? And so the only way we can be forgiven is if we invite Christ into our life. Another reason I'm thankful that Jesus died for our sins, is that we can not only be forgiven, but have a, a walk with God. We can hear God talk to us. We can hear him speak to us to help us when we're in danger or trouble and when you know evil is coming our way and to what we should do and, and to be able to love people even when we don't feel like it. So he gives us power to love and, and just to know him, you know, feel that warm hug in our heart. Well, that's his spirit that's loving on us and to, just to know um, how to... Um, have an impact on others. Isn't that great, you guys? Listen, a couple things here before we go. Thanks living, okay, that's when you thank God a lot. 
How many, how many times do you think you thank God in a day? Anybody? How many times do you think you thank God? Ten times? Anybody think they thank God ten times? Fifteen? Well, that's our goal. Our goal is to go um, this week, uh, to go, maybe if you've only been thanking God two or three times a day, uh, maybe just say a prayer at night, thank God for your family, um, for that turkey dinner that's coming, or whatever. <laughs> um, most of all, for Jesus. But um, listen, um, we want to grow in that. So if you're only thanking God, if your uh, thank level is only at a five, make it a ten after Thanksgiving. Because he doesn't want us just to be so thankful during Thanksgiving or that day, but after that, okay? Because when we thank God, it expresses our faith. It takes faith to talk to God, to thank him, right? That's why it pleases God, because we're expressing our faith in him. And not only that, finally, it changes our continence. That's a big word. Can you guys say continence? What in the world is that? <laughs> Good stab. Uh, it is our attitude. Attitude. You can say, well, Pastor Kevin, why don't you just say it to begin with? You're right. I'm wordy. All right. So forgive me. It changed our attitude. Say attitude. So if you want to be able to persevere in life, um, we have to have an attitude change. Okay. One that reflects great faith in God. Even when things are tough and hard, we still express God's still good, God still cares, God's still here, He still loves us, and He'll be there every minute of the day, right? So that's the kind of, okay, you got something to say. All right, go ahead. I have a joke. Oh, man. Gee, what to do, what to do with time and. Should we, you want to let him go? Sammy said let you go. All right, go ahead. It's a good joke, right? What do you call a dead polar bear? A dead polar bear? I'm taking a risk here. Uh oh. Do we know? No. <laughs> Anything you want, it can't hear you. Ah. Uh, all right. For those of you that didn't get that, see Mason after church. He'll explain that to you. <laughs> uh, that's so risky, but <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> We're a church that takes risk here, right? Right. Reaching people it's, can be tough and messy, but we, um, listen, jokes aside, being a Christian should be a life that reflects thanks living, and we want to do that today and every day, right? You guys want to do that, right? All right, let's pray together, okay? Lord, we just thank you for these kids, for uh, this church, for you working in our lives, because when we give you thanks, that shows you're working in our lives, and you're working to make us a more loving people. God, help us to be more loving. We want to be more loving, God, to you and to others. And when we are to others, we are actually to you more loving. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, if you guys would all surround, uh, tell everybody your name. Hannah. Hannah has candy here for y'all, so you guys go to Hannah, swarm to her, and, uh, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs>
and my mom Willie was supposed to sing this morning, but she woke, this, woke up this morning and wasn't feeling good, so John's going to play a video. Thank you for showing that touchy video and for the praise team and uh, all those that came here today to be a part of this service. Uh, today, um, I'm going to uh, uh, veer off a little bit from what I originally planned uh, because originally I planned on preaching um, at the book of Acts 8, as I mentioned before, on the doctrine of regeneration and how that can help us defeat um, um, addictive sins, um, and we all, I believe, are probably addicted to some sin, if anything, complaining. Um, that is a sin, and that is can be addictive, right, in today's world, but the doctrine of regeneration is to help us with that, And but the thing is, as I was digging deeper into this text in Acts 8, I discovered some things about Simon the sorcerer, and the Lord opened my eyes to this addiction that Simon had to sorcery, and it was an addiction, uh, because we know after he believed and baptized, he turned, wanted to turn right back to it and asking for this power that the disciples had. But we have our own, I believe, addiction to whether we realize it or not, um, because it goes unrecognized under different names now. And I didn't even realize this, but there is um, some dark spirits working in our country that many, many, many have fallen prey to 
under uh, different names in sorcery, not sorcery, but can go from anything from the influence uh, upon uh, astrology to movies that have came out like Ghost Whisperer uh, to you're going to be shocked in what I'm going to present to you. But if it's not, if, if something is created um, and it's not by God, it's from a different spirit. And we have to recognize that as believers. But the enemy is good at counterfeiting and throwing things our way to make it be introduced as a, a good idea and even an idea that seems innocent. But whoa, its craftiness is rooted in deceit. And what I found out this past week is absolutely astonishing. And we need to realize that to protect our, our next generation coming up, our teenagers, our children, because this is what's coming over the airwaves, what I'm about ready to show you, that's having tremendous influence, that's growing leaps and bounds on the younger generation, I would say after the baby boomers. And so we need to realize that this morning. In fact, in the past five years, there's been a, a marked increase for those searching on Google for crystal healing. And that sounds very innocent on the surface. Crystal healing and the subculture of people who identify as witches is on the rise. Now, there's even a, a comic superhero called Wiccan. I don't know if you realize that. A comic superhero. And so there are a lot of these things I'm going to introduce under new names and, and so forth are rebranded, and you may not even recognize it. Um, but what was rejected of old, you know, the Salem witch, witch trials, it's being reintroduced and normalized right under our noses. And it's not only become a lucrative business, accepted as a viable source to help certain law enforcement agencies, but sorcery and white witchcraft, the practice of Simon, has taken foothold in our country. And you are um, going to have your eyes open this morning to how widespread this is existing and, and, and going on, and on the rise. Um, for example, uh, professional witches, uh, white witches, a person who practices magic for altruistic or benevolent, helpful purposes. That's actually a definition now, by the way, a white witch. <laughs> for um, Yeah, the they're, they're helpful purpose. Anyway, there's a woman with the last name Dzelik, who was raised Presbyterian, but after experimenting with a variety of religions, she was drawn to Wicca, and 22 years ago, she finally decided to become a witch. But here's what she says. Witches are not evil, and we don't worship the devil. We work on manipulating energy toward a beneficial end. You see how they're crafting their sentences? And now she's a mother of three and a grandmother of four, and she said whenever she wears a pentagram necklace, a five-pointed star symbolizing Wicca. She draws positive attention. She draws positive attention. People recognize that. Oh, that's that's neat. You know, that's that's cool. Um, in 1987, uh, a comedic movie came out called The Witches of Eastwick. Anybody ever seen it? The Witch, Witches of Eastwick. It came out um, around 1987. Well, I said that. <laughs> so, um, it was starring Cher, Susan Sarandon, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Jack Nicholson. A lot of you have heard those names. And um, after um, I was preparing today's sermon, I got to thinking, has America become the land of Eastwick? Have we become the land of Eastwick? Right under our noses. You know, in Israel, in the Old Testament, this stuff crept into their culture without them probably even thinking on the surface what was going on. But listen, I'm going to fast forward here. There was an, an article, um, many articles that have came out recently, one by The Atlantic, the title of the article is, Why Witchcraft is on the Rise. Why Witchcraft is on the Rise. One theory that's been given is, whenever there are events that shake up the foundations of a society, people will absolutely turn to the occult. They will turn to the occult for powers to help them in their circumstances. The USA Today, in an October 2021 issue, said we're in the middle of a witch moment. Hip witchcraft. Hip, H-I-P, hip witchcraft is on the rise in the U.S. Witches no longer are considered wicked, but hip. Hip, it's a cool thing now. The number of Americans who identify with wicked or paganism has risen from 134,000 in 2001 to nearly 2 million today. Folks, that's a 646% increase right under our noses. We just don't realize that. Unless somebody like me comes and brings this to our attention one Sunday, and then we go on and, and just forget and think it has no bearing or influence, but it does. But there's things we can do, too. And that's the good news I always like to leave us on. So here's a warning, a warning here for you all. Listen, I'm about to give 
a lot of inordinate and an exorbitant um, amount or an excessive amount of examples and evidence as to how it's rampant and how it has influenced our country without realizing that, well, these evil spirits exerting their influence um, that I realize now the Lord wants us to wake up as a church and as Christians in these last days to what's going on. Because in the Bible, in Revelation, it actually talks about there will be a rise in sorcery. It's actually in Scripture. It's actually warning us. We think, oh, that stuff, that's just for old days, old times. No, no, it's not. I'm going to show you how it's happening right now on increased measure so that we can be prepared and so we can protect what's coming over the airways for our kids and our grandkids, people like my granddaughter Haven and, and uh, Hannah who came this morning and, and, and other kids um, are, that are here. We have to watch and protect our kids, okay? Just look at here, um, all these book titles that are out in Barnes & Nobles. These are just a few of the hundreds out there, folks. Uh, there's several here. The White House Witches, Steeped in Gold. Um, these are titles, and there are many titles that doesn't have the word witch in it, but they're about that to secretly get people indoctrinated. Uh, some not so secret, they just put it out there. Um, don't even try to hide it. But people like Melanie Wilbur of New Jersey, who discovered witchcraft at the young age of nine. By what? By reading those kinds of books. And then she practiced it in secret for years. Many of our actors and actresses do this, and I'll show you later. You don't realize this um, in trying to influence how Hollywood is trying to dupe us. Melanie is now a witch and owner of Sedwins. It's specialized in tarot card readings, energy healing, and ingredients recently gathered at a bonfire with other local witch witches to recite prayers and issues, spells to honor the dead. And she says this, our, our, intentions, our intentions are for healing of the world. Healing of the world. Doesn't that sound innocent and sweet and, and buttercupish to help us in our country? That's what our society needs, right? We need more of this because things are broken and we need to, you know, uh, experiment me with this. See, it's all rebranded, all renamed. It's all redefining um, things such as back in 2005. How many of you used to watch the show Ghost Whisper? I've seen it. Ghost Whisper. You know, Jennifer um, Hewitt, Jennifer Love Hewitt, I think is her name, the actress. Um, basically, she was a medium. That's what she was. She was a medium. She was connecting to the dead, right? And then helping people uh, find their way. Um, listen, what starts as an innocent idea is not always innocent. And so what always is trying to be introduced and us indoctrinated. People uh, don't even realize, but um, the store Marshalls, you know the store Marshalls? You've heard of that store, right? Uh, Marshalls, um, they, have, they sell tarot cards, and they uh, have books on witchcraft, and they sell sages and crystals, and they even have a holiday kit for you now, a holiday kit for this stuff, right? Um, here's a little TikTok you can show, because it's, it's blowing up on TikTok, by the way, uh, witchcraft and Wiccan and all this stuff. So here's a little TikTok we found. Marshalls. I saw Anastasia Moon Girl talking about this tarot deck. I've been looking for a new one and was super excited to find it there. I found these mindfulness cards. They're little challenge cards just to help keep you focused and do a little self-care. I found this big chunk of selenite and this evil eye mug, which I absolutely love. That's just a little clip there, folks. Um, Oh, it's a professional a witch named Juliet Diaz. Uh, she has uh, purported that she can be hired by you to uh, receive help, to fulfill your dreams and do magic on your behalf. Uh, she's the author and of a best-selling book called Witchery, Embrace the Witch Within. It's earned more than a half million dollars from her magic work, and she was named Best Witch, yes, Best Witch of the Year by Spirit Guides Magazine, and she instructs more than 8,900 witches currently enrolled in her online school. Diaz said that her mother taught her witchcraft at a very young age to make potions uh, and to cure her of her nightmares, and she's seen into the invisible realm at the young age of five. She even uses her gifts as a seer uh, in working crime scene forensics for law enforcement. Ten years ago, she followed guidance from her ancestors' spirits to lead her to quit her job, divorce her first husband, and threw herself full-time into the working of a witch. Listen, Diaz's most popular offering is her ancestral candle service. It's for $45. Um, she can manifest intentions, they call it intentions, and she can even read your thoughts, as she did to this person that was writing for the Atlantic before the person even sat down. 
She performs up to 100 candle services each month and said she usually sells out within a day. She brags about what we Christians would otherwise call answered prayer. She said that last month that she has seen four pregnancies from doing this, people wanting to be pregnant. She's seen 33 job promotions, 12 business startups, and 12 wedding proposals, and four court wins from chanting, from these, um, connecting into these, um, um, into these spirit realm here. Listen, I don't know if you know, you know much about TikTok, but this is on TikTok, and its presence is um, it's, it's gasping. It says, today's witches are increasingly congregating on TikTok, sharing their witchcraft tutorials and other magical contents under hashtag witchcraft. Um, and they've amassed more than 20 billion views. 20 billion views. Another hashtag, hashtag, which hashtag has received over 585 million views. And hashtag baby witch, for those just getting into the craft, has now 45 million followers. And take a trip into one of these hashtags, and you'll encounter a thriving community that live streams, tarot readings, tarot card readings, and spell tutorials, and po and Posts engaging educational videos on crystals, candles, plants, and their take on the study of magic, spelled with M-A-G-I-C-K. That's important because I'm going to throw a lot of phrase out to you that these things are coming under the auspices of. We don't even recognize it. And by the way, that's the job of pastors and, 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 and preachers is to expose the works of darkness because many people don't realize this. Okay, so magic, M-A-G-I-C-K, um, which is used this spelling to distinguish what they do from a difference than pulling a rabbit out of a hat kind of magic. It's a different kind of magic. Listen, this huge following and influence on tick, uh, tack, uh, TikTok, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm just kidding. I did it intentionally. Anyway, TikTok, she says, I use TikTok as a very positive feed to spread love and spirituality in a way that connects everyone rather than just a select few. Diaz has close to 88,000 TikTok followers and sells anointing oils with intention infused, intention infused, be careful folks when you read labels, intention infused body products in her online store. This is right under our noses folks. Listen, Instagram's influence is not any less uh, with this reigning witch influencer named Brie Luna. Brie Luna, pay attention to that name because she has more than 450,000 followers. And she's collaborated with other multinational digital media and entertainment websites and outlets like Coach, Refinery29, and Smashbox. Yes, yeah, Smashbox, the cosmetic line. They come out with a new cosmetic line inspired by the transformative quality of crystals. They have their own cosmetic line. Listen, but nothing's new under the sun. This stuff has been being practiced, and we find in um, Acts, the text for today, it was going on Simon's day. I want you to pay attention to his day and transfer it in today's culture. So take a look at Acts uh, chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. I want to show you the extent it existed. Catch some key phrases here in um, Philip's day, in Simon the Sorcerer's day. Okay? So verse 5 says, Philip went down to a city in Samaria, and he proclaimed the Messiah there. Or he proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news we can be saved from our sins. He gave him the saving message. Um, of Jesus Christ. And verse 9, now for some time, a man named Simon, did you notice key phrase, some time? That means long time. He's, he's practiced this a long time. It means this, this influence on his culture through him has been exerted for a long time. In other words, their culture is under the influence of de evil and demonic spirits for a long time. And they allowed themselves to be succumbed to it, thinking it was innocent, no harm, because he did a lot of good in their city, their country of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great. Right? And all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, this man should rightly be called the great power of God. Because he had real powers, they thought. And he was able to do things with powers, but from the dark force. The message version says they all thought he had supernatural powers and called him the great wizard. In verse 11, they followed him. Why? They followed him. Did you get that? They followed him. Because why? He had amazed them for how long? A long time with his sorcery. Verse 12, but when Philip proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ, the Samaritans were baptized, Simon himself believed, and was baptized, and then not long after that, he wants to go right back to it. Listen, um, we live 
in a day no different. In fact, on the rise with this stuff. That you're about ready uh, to be shocked and surprised. But today I want to cover uh, why uh, we need to talk about what, the what. What is going on? How is it manifested? So you can be aware of it. So you can warn your kids, your grandkids, and yourself. And maybe there's things that you don't even realize are attached or connected to it in some way without even realizing. Because we need to know how it's affecting our culture. And then finally, B, I want to talk about how do we respond. How do we respond to this extent of this um, culture? I don't know if you've heard of the famous musician and artist Jenny Weaver. But she speaks about her own journey from being an ex-witch to sold out to Jesus Christ. It's in a video, and I uh, encourage you to watch this video in its entirety. We don't have time today. I just want to show an excerpt from this video, okay, to warn this generation, to us to be able to spot the signs, the influence of sorcery in our world. Because one of our jobs as pastors is to show the schemes of the enemy. Ephesians 5.11 says, Take no part in unfruitful works. Not only that, but instead expose them. What I'm doing is exposing, folks. This is my job. I'm trying to expose. I'm exposing them. Another version says, have no fellowship with the deeds of darkness. Instead, expose or reprove, correct, show the world how they're perhaps guilty of or cross the line or they shouldn't do that because it's our responsibility. That's why. That's what Philip did when he warned this, this sorcerer named Simon. Here's the video clip. Not going to work, John? Okay. I want you to write down this title, and you can watch it later on YouTube. This video is called X Witch Warns Witchcraft Expanding. How Hollywood is releasing spells over its viewers. That's right. X Witch Warns Witchcraft Expanding. That's by Jenny Weaver. Jenny Weaver. Listen, Pastor um, Mike Signorelli. He's a senior pastor at V1 Church. V1 Church that's having its presence. He said that in his own YouTube video with self-titled name, says Satan is on a mission to normalize the demonic. Catch that. Remember that. Satan is on a mission to normalize the demonic. We see that with the LGBTQ community, right? The spirits are influencing that agenda, right? It's coming across as normalized, right? It's normalized, and then we as Christians become the marginalized or flip-flopping it. We're the haters. We're the ones that don't know what we're talking about. We're the ones that have lost our mind. But praise God, there's people like Candace Cameron who is leaving the Hallmark Channel because of her very stand, and she's against the rising influence in that, of that agenda and saying, I'm no longer going to be part of Hallmark Channel because of what all the shows they want to be a part of have to do with LGBTQ influence. Praise God for people like Candace Cameron. That recently she's been attacked for that. She's been attacked for that. She's viewed as a hater or lost her mind or archaic with her beliefs, right? But she's not. Um, in fact, she's um, being part of a, a, a new channel um, that's um, going out there called Great American Family. Great American Family, a new channel to get back to the values of the Christian faith and the things that we should be a part of. She's one that is taking a stand. Enough is enough. And she's taking her shots. But she would rather do that than come under and succumb and compromise to the spirits of darkness that are manifesting themselves at an all-time high. And we need to be ready for this because the Bible warns us that in the end times this is supposed to happen. And so we got to recognize these schemes that are trying to be normalized. It's not normal, though, folks. It's not normal to come under an evil witch spirit or cast a spell and to be healed and think that, hey, it's okay, I, I, I'm better now. That's not the light we're to turn to. That's not the source of power. The source is to be Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, folks. That's the true source. That's the true power. That's true love that we need to turn and come under and worship. Listen, now many of you may say, Pastor, witchcraft has long left New Bern. Well, maybe under the old form. But now in the new forms with YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and on and on and in Marshalls and whatever else, it's having its heyday. In fact, it's been coming back with a vengeance, folks. Right under our nose and eyes, we don't even see this. We've been focused on LGBTQ a lot of times, but the enemy is just working his uh, tail through um, all kinds of cracks and so forth. Listen, 
right? I looked it up. Yelp Advertising. I don't know if you've heard of Yelp Advertising, but New Bern has its own special uh, local agent. Uh, this psychic specialist and spellcaster, I won't give the name of the person, but she uh, serves the New Bern area, open 24 hours. Um, how convenient. Um, but she's categorized. Listen, Yelp has categorized her under this, under the auspices, under the label, under this. Palmist and churches and places of worship and spiritual consultants. You see how we're slipping under spiritual advisors and consultants, right? There's a YouTube video called How to Practice Witchcraft with Kids. Bree Luna, uh, the founder of the popular modern mystic website called um, The Hood Witch, she recently partnered, like as I told you, with a famous cosmetic company called Smashbox to unveil this crystallized collection. It's a seven-piece line of crystal-infused makeup products inspired by Luna's work with rituals. Listen, people like Brie, the hood witch, has hoodwinked us. We've been hoodwinked. A lot of people right under our noses. Don't you be too. There are red flags that in that video by Jenny Weaver. She talks about red flags that we can help our children and our grandchildren help spot for them because they can't spot for themselves. Listen, this pastor that I just mentioned earlier about Mike Signora, he is telling, he's coming out saying, we don't even realize it, but kindergartners right now are having tarot card readings by their kindergarten teachers in a very secret way without him realizing. Tarot card readings, folks. And even Christians are giving in to things like that are red flags, healing crystals, give you energy, necklaces with third eye, uh, um, third eye necklaces, uh, chakras, um, things that communicate with the dead, ancestors, uh, to give them power. So we have to realize and be aware, folks, um, of these things. Um, there's pagan homeschooling, sources for pagan educational material and homeschool support. Um, there is um, all this stuff. But listen, we've got to realize that this is supposed to increase. In fact, Revelation 18.23 says this, that a spiritual Babylon is coming. I think it's already here. Spiritual Babylon, in a way, it's a way here in large major. Spiritual Babylon, which will represent a false religious system of belief, will predominate and will deceive all nations with sorcery. And as I've studied this, I see how this could easily happen. This one world system with a one religious system could come and say this stuff that what I'm talking about is wrong, is legitimate, and it's good. And don't listen to Christians that say it's bad. They're off their rocker. They're woohoo, you know? No, we're not woohoo. They're woohoo, okay? We got to get that right, okay? But this is what's happening. In Re Revelation 18 23, it says this By magic spells, all the nations will be led astray. It's right there in the word. Revelation 18 23. What's it say? Read with me. By magic spells, all the nations will be led astray. We think it's going to be from some other things. Not sorcery. That's in Simon's day. That don't exist now. Newburn's got witchcraft out of it. Okay, well, all right. Well, look at 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 8 says this. It corroborates this 1823 um, address in Revelation. It says this. But mark this. Now, when someone says mark this, it's saying pay attention. Be real about this. Be serious. But mark this. Write this down. Look at it. Don't forget it. Don't just come here Sunday and think, uh, we heard another message and, you know, these things come and go. No. This is coming and it's not going, okay? Mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days, just as Janus and John Bray's opposed Moses, men opposing the truth, men of depraved minds, so too will there be similar widespread active rejection of the truth in the last days. Now, you're saying, well, who is Janus and John Bray's? Well, those were the two false magicians that replicated or duplicated Moses' supernatural acts that God gave him when he turned those staff into serpents. They were able to duplicate that. Now how? Whether it was by illusion like modern day magicians can and fool and pull the wool over eyes, I don't know. There may be some, you know, somehow some powers that they actually have. I don't know. But it's warning us, just as it happened in Moses' day, it's going to happen in today's day, but with greater measure. That's all I'm getting at. The Bible is referring back to then, taking us now and saying, don't think it's all one and done. Don't think it's gone away at Moses' day. It's coming back with a vengeance, and we see that in our own country. But like many things, Christians get duped, and we just sit in the sidelines, and then we just, we just play ignorant. Well, I didn't know. Well, you don't know now. You know now. 
In fact, the strength and superpowers of sorcery will become such a all time high, so powerful, that even Christians will be tempted to believe that there's nothing wrong with it. Just like they're doing indoctrinating with the LGBT. A lot of Christians are being duped and coming under that and thinking it's okay. And perhaps even get involved themselves. Because in Matthew 24, 24, it says, For false Christ and false prophets, these are pagan prophets, when you do fortune telling, you're a false prophet. You become a pagan prophet. Just like this. They will arise. They will arise, folks. This doesn't go away. They will arise and will give great signs and wonders. Just like in Simon's day, they'll be amazed because of what they can perform and do. And it'll captivate people and they'll be led astray. They'll come under these false and dark and evil spirits. They'll be influenced, impacted by them. And it says, it goes on in 24, 24, so as to deceive, mislead, if possible, even the elect. It's right there. Even the elect. Who? The pagan prophets, false prophets, fortune tellers, things like that. Nahum 3, 4. This is interesting. In Nahum 3, 4, the minor prophet in the Old Testament, he even talks about how sorcery interconnects, is interrelated to even sexual sins. Nahum 3, 4 says this, the intertwining of it. It speaks of the doubling down, this powerful interplay between sorcery and sexuality. Sorcery and sexuality, a lot of times, is interconnected. And it says in Nahum 3, 4, it will affect our senses and give rise to sensuality, which contributes to the rise, by the way, in a corrupted culture. Here's what it says. Because of the many harlotries of the harlot, the seductive mistress of sorcery, the seductive mistress of sorcery, who betrays nations by her prostitution and clans by her witchcraft. She mentioned that we're in witchcraft and sorcery. She's mentioned twice there with its interconnectedness to um, invalid uh, or perverted or sex wrongfully sexuality that's going on here. Now, interestingly, the New Testament Greek word translated sorcery is pharma, pharmakeo. Pharmakeia. What do you think that was going. Where do you think this is going? Well, it's the source of our English word pharmacy. In Paul's day, the word primarily meant dealing in poison. These witchcrafts deal with potions. Dealing in poison or drug use and was applied to divination and spell casting because sorcerers often use drugs along with their incantations and amulets, what are lucky charms. I'm giving you a lot of words here. I know that. Well, amulets, lucky charms to conjure up occult power. It's all meant to give them power. Now listen, you say, okay, pastor, you say a lot about that, you know, about the um, sorcerer being wrong and so forth and what have you, but um, is it, I mean, what is in the Bible? Does it say specifically what it does? In Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12, sorcery is listed among the sinful practices of the nations surrounding Israel, and God called it an abomination. Read with me. There shall not be found among you anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes, or interprets omens, or becomes, turns to a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, what in the world is a lot of those terms? Well, real quick breakdown. The definition of divination is simply this. It's fortune telling. It's predicting the future. It's pagan prophecy by being connected to an evil spirit. Interprets omens. That's simply the ability to interpret signs, events, phenomenon. A medium is a person who communicates with spirits, dead or demonic, like Ghost Whisper in the show that was portrayed in doing that. A necromancer is simply a magician, as in um, connecting to the dead. That's all it is, necromancer. So she was that as well. Jennifer Hewitt Love, or Gen Jennifer Love Hewitt portrayed that. Um, a seance, um, a lot of you may not know, but a seance is simply a meeting in which people try to communicate to the dead. That's what a seance is. And listen, um, the Bible is very clear on these dangers, and here's why. Here's why. Because when you're practicing this or come under this in even subtle ways, what you're doing is, in a real subtle way, coming under the forces of darkness. In other words, God doesn't want us to come under the forces of darkness, but the one true source of light that holds all the truth what we need that is able to guide us and give us wisdom. But not only that, it's a subtle introduction to the worship of the wrong spirit or spirits the wrong god we're meant to worship the one and true god only jesus christ our lord and savior in the garden of eden 
a lot of people think, well, what did Adam do that was so wrong? He just did one sin. Does he really deserve to die and go to hell for that? I think there's something larger going on. I think because Satan was introduced on the scene, he not only sinned and crossed the line with God, he was allowing himself to become a follower of Satan. That was what was at stake. It was who you're going to worship, who you're going to follow. So he chose something even greater than just the sin on the initial original scene there. Listen, a few more things I've got to warn you to share with you because that's my job. But I don't know if you know, but in 2020, a movie came out called Craft. Craft. It was real riches were brought in and they cast spell over the actors. Actually, the actors and actresses got together in a huddle and they cast spell over them and then they allowed them to go and act. These producers allowed this to happen. This movie called Dead Hot, Season of the Witch, is coming out soon. Many of you know the actress Vanessa Hudgens of High School Musical? She stars as herself. It's a, it's a documentary in this reality TV-type documentary that Hudgens and her best friend, singer and producer, Gigi Magri, uh, they go to Salem, Massachusetts, as they set out to learn about witchcraft, ghost hunting, and connecting with the spirit world. Now, U.S. Weekly reports that Hudgens and McGree are familiar with basic witchcraft, and they plan to showcase their skills during this pilgrimage to Salem in this documentary. The president of Bundam Murray Productions, according to Variety, Variety Magazine, said they've been doing little spells since they were kids. He's very well aware of this. It doesn't matter. And they were just really interested in that world. And they've been featured on the Kelly Clarkson show, she talks about her ability to talk to ghosts. She says, I've accepted the fact that at an early age I had this gift, this gift to benefit the world. The docu documentary film has been described as the craft meeting the simple life. And these same powers of darkness that hoodwink Simon the Sorcerer are pulling in the population now. Pop artist and TikTok sensation Devon Cole came out with a popular song called Witch, acronym W-I-T-C-H, on an album with the same title released a couple of months ago, just a couple of months ago. I'm going to quote her. She says this, To me, W-I-T-C-H, which is a song that reclaims the witch as a symbol of women's resistance. Some say that witches were the original resistance fighters and healers. Her witch music video claims to unlock your inner witch and is complete with enticing dance moves, spell casting around a bonfire, and spooky Ouija board experiences. Just a few more. CEO Chelsea Selby, founder of a beauty brand of soap called Witch Baby Soap, is a practicing witch that partakes in casting spells, participates in rituals, and claims to develop intuition through meditation, divination, and the observation of moon cycles and pagan festivals. She says this, you can worship one god, many gods, or no gods. Many, maybe some of you have heard of um, John, John Edward. John Edwards from the uh, book, it's a... Um, Multi-million dollar seller, best, New York Times bestseller, uh, John Edwards. Uh, Crossing Over is the name of his TV show and channel. You may have seen it, but he connects with the dead as well. He's been featured, folks, on Oprah, on Dr. Phil, on The Oz. You see how these, even, listen, even if you were to bring somebody on your panel to discuss, and even if you came from a supposed objective viewpoint that we just want to introduce to what they possibly claim. Listen, if I was a Christian, I'm not going to bring somebody on my panel to say question whether it's true or not, or just to expose people what people do. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. From 2001 to 2004, Edward was the producer, host of the Crossing Over Show with John Edward, which has been syndicated, broadcast on the Sci-Fi Channel, in the United States, on Living TV in the UK, crossing over, Edwards gave psychic readings to an audience. Um, this new thing called psychic mediums, and they're now called, under the auspices, new, new name brand folks, they're called new wellness coaches. New wellness coaches. I want to read just one or two. I wish I had more time, folks. So this is if it's, I have so much stuff I amassed. I only had time just to share a brief little bit here. That's the scary thing. But listen, there was an article that came out the top 10 clairvoyants in today's world. Top 10 clairvoyants, psychics and mediums to watch in 2021. They're the upcoming superstars, y'all. So you want to pay attention, right, to them. They're, they're the ones you want to go to and listen to, right? The top 10 clairvoyants. Listen, it's just a clever wording to normalize sorcery and nothing less and make it mainstream. To indoctrinate our children into this new coming way of culture that the Bible talks about in the times. We can either blow this off today and say, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's, it's, that's, that's not going to happen. Okay, well, 
I'm just telling you what the Bible teaches. You can believe in what you want when you leave. But Courtney Taylor is a world-renowned spiritual teacher, medium, and transformational coach. She's better known as the modern-day psychic because she gives her psychic work a more modern approach through which she provides her clients with practical tools they can use to improve their lives. She has a natural gift, and coupled with her decade-long background in social work, she has something unique to offer. Courtney is a gifted and successful medium who has been featured on major psychic networks worked with celebrities, and also consulted on high-profile cases. High-profile cases, y'all. So that's what we need the FBI to turn to, right? Figure these cases. Well, if it works, then why not turn to it? That's what we want to do, right? As long as it works. We're a practical generation, right? Even if it bypasses what God's Word says, we can make exception, right, to a few things, huh? Well, her focus is on women, and she helps them reach their full potential. It's her passion to coach other women to create the life they dream of and achieve the things they're passionate about. That don't sound so bad. Her mission in life is to help individuals come to terms with their own gifts and become modern-day psychics themselves, a.k.a. psychic discipleship makers. Indoctrination. Indoctrination. Disciple makers. We're going to be disciple makers, not this kind, though, okay? Listen, I could go on and on, but the bottom line is this. Our response is this. We need to first realize and not downplay the extent of the influence of dark spirits in our world today. It's time that we turn to the spirit of light. We may be a small church here, but we can be large in volume in our mass producing of disciple makers and to be recognized and have our teenagers realize what's going on in their world, folks. We are to do all we can to dispense, to dispel the domain of darkness. And we do this simply by one last thing. It's simply this. Do what Philip did. He shared the gospel. There's no greater message than the gospel of Jesus Christ that can dispel darkness. It's not that we go out here and look for a bunch of women flying on witch, uh, brooms and whatever, okay? That's not. No, it's the gospel. It's the gospel. You, you go and tell the next person, and whatever they're practicing, whatever they're under, the gospel will help them like they did in Simon's day. It says many of them came to believe the true God who truly loves them. Listen, the most loving thing you can do is tell people the message of Christ. That's the most loving thing you can do. A lot of us say smile at someone. That's good. That's good. We should do that. A lot of people say do a good deed, good, good act. That's good. That's good, right? But the best, the best that we're reserving a lot of us for the least and last is the gospel. The gospel will turn the tide. The gospel always has. It always will. And there's going to be a massive amount of people, even in times that come, the 144,000. There's many people. There's going to be a revival. You want to be a part of that, the Great Awakening. It's time to be awakened to what's going on and allow Jesus to awaken you. Rise today. Church on the rise. Church on the move. Because we love Jesus Christ and we want to be obedient to him. Listen, it's time, as the world considers, you know, what, where they're a part of, it's time that we upgrade our game. A lot of you can upgrade your game in the workforce. You can upgrade your game here. The, 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 really, where you want to upgrade your game is the kingdom of God. It's time to upgrade our game. Thank you, guys, for listening and being a part of this this morning. I pray that you will share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the spirit that loves us and always will. Let's pray. God, I, uh, I've maxed myself out. I've exhausted myself in doing the research and putting this all together and trying to organize my thoughts and, and, and the Word of God together in such a way, Father, that we respond. Every time the Word of God is preached, it demands a response. How will we respond today? Will we blow this off? We think, well, it doesn't affect me. I don't even know, I don't even know half this stuff. Father, may we not be ignorant or stay ignorant. You tell us to not be ignorant of the schemes of the enemy. Now, why would you tell us that? Well, one, the enemy has schemes. Two, we have a tendency to be ignorant. Three, let's stop. Let's upgrade our game. Whatever that looks like, let's respond to you today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen, as the music comes here in just a little bit, um, you come forward. If you've never given your life to Christ, you can do so today. If um, you uh, have had a bad week and you just need somebody to pray with, there will be myself and others here to join you. You come. However the Spirit leads, you come. You pray. You share as we come to the end here. Everybody stand, please.
y'all can be seated just for one quick short minute of announcements. Um, uh, Maria wanted me to tell you about the uh, veteran Christmas